for some of you, this session is going to be the most valuable session. It's going to be the most mind-blowing session of the day because we're going to share how we find investors. Now, you got to realize something. National statistics from a lot of the IRA companies out there, these IRA companies like Quest Trust, Equity Trust, IRA Services, Mid-Atlantic, Pensco, they've got millions, if not sometimes billions, under asset management. And consistently across the board, there's usually at least 30% of the money that's in a self-directed IRA is sitting making 0% interest, waiting for somebody like you who's got their stuff together, who understands the process, who has the vendors in place, has a deal. They're waiting for somebody to reach out to them to give them a 6 to 8% return because they're not making money. They're not making 12% or 8% on their own in the market in today's world. Then you don't need to pay them that. You need to pay them something that's more in in line with what they're doing as a passive investor. Okay. A lot of private capital out there sitting in the sun. So we find, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of people that have an IRA. It may not be with an equity trust request. That's fine. But we find that two out of every three individuals with an IRA have 150 grand or more sitting in it. 67% across the board. Stats we've pulled research that we've done, uh, some of the vendors that we use to pull lists of IRAs, list sorts of stuff like that, consistently find that two thirds out of everybody that has an IRA has at least 150 grand or more sitting in it. That doesn't mean you can't use people that have 50 or 75 grand all day long. I wouldn't use anybody that's got less than 25 when you're first starting off. I'd stick to that 50 number. You don't wanna use somebody's last five grand because they're gonna drive you bonkers. But let's talk about how we find investors. now. Finding investors to fund your deals, you, you want to start hanging out where investors are hanging out. And that's going to be usually the easiest place to go to is like real estate investment clubs and different meetup groups. Every group, every city I know out there usually has some sort of real estate investment club. LinkedIn, you can literally type in real estate investors to find thousands and thousands of people on LinkedIn. Um, you can look in LinkedIn groups. There's different profiles. You can do keyword search on there, a whole variety of ways to leverage it. You can go to something like Connected Investor or Bigger Pockets. People literally on bigger pockets will say, I've got 50 grand to invest. What do I do with it? I got a hundred grand. What should I do with it? It's an easy way to raise capital if you've got you know, a pitch deck or a, a small, you know, it's one of the things our, our coaching students we help with is put together a 10 minute pitch deck, talk about what they do to help them raise capital. And we've got students have raised millions of dollars just on bigger pockets and connected investor. Okay. Like literally, you could go set keywords and say 50K to invest, 75K to invest, 100K to invest, and find plenty of people out there. Okay. Um, self-directed IRA custodian or self-directed trustee events. A lot of these IRA companies are hosting educational or networking or conferences. That's a great place to go to to hang out and network with people. We like using public records, okay? Now, Netra Online is a free website. And this pulls all this different county uh, websites together in each state and each county out there. So if you go to netraonline.com, and what we will do is we'll walk you through this real fast. Not every state is as easy as others, but you can find stuff on every state. So if you go to netraonline.com, it's a free tool to all the different county websites, okay? So like you can go to the county appraisal districts, you can go to the assessor's website, you can go to the county clerk or the recorder's office. These are the two major websites that we go to pull contacts, okay? And what we do, if somebody has used their IRA to buy a piece of property or lend money out of their IRA on a piece of property, there are documents or filings that show this, okay? So let us let me show you this. You and What we do is we just pull a list of the 50 plus self-directed IRA custodians that are out there to search. So, so let's do that, the county appraisal district. It's gotta be an appraisal district that lets you search by name. Like I, like Virginia won't let you search by a, a owner's name. Maryland won't let you do it. California won't let you do it. I just found out the other day, Minnesota won't let you search by the name. That's okay. There's plenty of other states to do, okay? So you go to appraisal district and you type in the self-directed IRA name. Because if somebody buys, like if I buy with my IRA, it would say Quest Trust for the benefit of Scott Carson IRA number 123456. That would be the owner because my IRA owns that asset. So do I go search for Scott Carson? No, I don't know Scott Carson. I don't know the guys. I don't know the, the IRA investors' names, but I do know that I can search for Equity Trust or Quest Trust on the owner search. And it'll pop up everybody in the county that has used their IRA to buy. And you could do, you could search all the different, you just do a 
complete list of self-directed IRA companies. It'll pull over 50 plus names for you. Easy done. We actually include that in the uh, three-day manual. Okay. But it, it'll show you the property address and the mailing address. Now, what you want to make sure is the mailing address isn't actually the corporate office of the self-directed IRA custodian. You, you want to see the mail address is the, the investor's address. Okay. How do you find the mail address? You Google the mailing address for Quest or, I, or Equity Trust. Okay. And it's an easy thing, finding mailing address. It may just say equity trust, which is fine, but if it gives you a different mailing address, perfect. You've got the contact. I would just, I'll mail a postcard or a letter out to the IRA, say, hello, equity trust investor. I see that you bought this property with your IRA. It was an investment deal. Are you looking for more deals? I'd love to talk with you. Okay. And this is a great way. We, we, we find out account holder names a lot of times. If you look at the, the deed, it'll show you the full name of the investor equity trust for the benefit of and maybe that may just be cut off the appraisal district but when you sits the deed it pulls up the full name you can hire a va to do this for you or do it yourself or just pull the list and do an email blast i mean not an email but a letter campaign out to the ira investors and if you see their name you can see what kind of other properties that they own in the area and search for name of that mailing address or search for them on like google or white pages or spokio.com okay and like I said, we mail a letter or postcard, or if we got a unique name, we'll find them on LinkedIn or social media and send them a message directly there as well. Say, hey, Mark Brewer, I saw that you used your IRA to buy a property. Are you looking for more deals? I'd love to talk with you. I'm an investor in Austin, Texas that buys distressed assets. And we're always looking for more investors to help fund our deals or buy more deals. I'd love to talk with you, see what you're looking for and see if your goals and our goals will align and see if we can't put some, help you make above average returns with your IRA. Pretty simple. Freaking thing. If you're talking to IRA investors, this is like shooting fish in a barrel versus talking to people that have no clue what the hell you're talking about. Okay. Now you can do the same thing on the recorder's website. Okay. Go to the county clerk or the county recorder's office, but you're not going to, you can still type in equity trust. But what we do is we do a document search. Okay. We look for a deed record search and search for either name, equity trust on the grantee or the grantor, the mortgagee or the mortgagor. Oftentimes you'll see a release of lien and that's a good thing because somebody's just got paid off. Now they got money to go to work. Same thing. We'll look for like an equity trust, quest trust, gives us a mailing address oftentimes for the bar for the lender. It'll also give us the investor's name. And a lot of times these are real estate investors as well that you can reach out to potential buyers. And that, once again, we'll say I'll mail a letter or postcard or contact on social media and you rinse and repeat that. Now you can purchase custom lists of IRA investors. You can go to like to, uh, um, exact data, uh, Melissa data, and reach out to them and say, hey, I want to buy a list of IRA investors in a particular county or state or city. Uh, we use exact data and they're able to, off of like tax records or uh, tax filings. We'll pull a list of people's names, addresses, emails, and they can clarify if they've got 150 grand or more. Um, you can also buy a list of like employees from a company. Like when, um, say like a company's going out of business or back during COVID, uh, Oh, what was the big company in Houston that that laid off their entire staff? It was not Schlumberger, but let's just say it was Schlumberger or somebody like that who sends their their whole lays off their entire employer business going out coming going out of business. You could literally go pay and say, hey, "I need to pull a whole list of employees that work for this company in this area," and then for like twenty five cents a lead, they can pull the whole list, which is good. And that's a valuable thing: name, address, email, and phone number. Some of the time, so if you buy a list of IRA investors. It's a pretty big list. Uh, we like exact data. And usually the, the lead's gonna cost you six to 14 cents a lead, depending on how big it is, 25 cents for a business lead. Usually a minimum order is gonna be like a, you know, they, they prefer a thousand. You can order some of this stuff off their website for smaller lists. But a thousand dollar order is gonna be like 16,000 leads. That's all the IRA investors you'll ever need. It's gonna be harder for you to upload that 16,000 into your CRM to drip market to them than would in other areas. But like we buy all across the country. So this is a great way if you're looking to raise some big capital, start a fund to kind of use this to start raising some capital. And um, I'll show I'll walk you through Metro Online here in just a second, but where can you post for deals? You know, we'll post deals from past experience or we'll actually provide some case studies you can talk about, or if you're working through a deal, uh, I highly encourage you to reach out to me and say, hey, I'm working on this deal, looking for a funding partner uh, or past case studies. Here's a deal that we've closed in the past. Look. People like to see that you've got a, a track record. If you don't have a track record, that's fine. Everybody's got to start off in some, some place. And you just got to share that you know what the hell you're doing. Okay. 
never, ever, ever, ever mention safe or guaranteed. Those are big red flags, and the SEC will get mad at you for saying that. I like creating short pitch deck videos, like a 10-minute video talking about what, what you're focused on, your business, your vendors, and what you're looking for. Um, I'm also a big fan of creating a short little like one to two minute video talking about the deal that you can share with people. But with your pitch deck video, it's about you, your focus, your company and team, the vendors and and, and the different types of deals that you're doing or looking at. And this builds rapport. Our, we've got many of our students have put their pitch deck video together and it, answering all the questions, helping them raise millions, millions of dollars. And they don't have a ton of experience, but they've got the team, the vendors out there. Now, when it comes to qualifying investors, not every investor is the same. I like to ask them, are they currently investing in real estate? Yes or no. Or have they invested in real estate in the past? Yes or no. Are they accredited or sophisticated? And I'll usually simply, hey, what do you make per year? Just so I know if you're accredited or sophisticated. How much are they looking to invest? Okay. Usually, so I got 250, great. Let me start off with 100 to start off with. How long are they looking to invest? Oh, I only want to make my money tied up in 90 days or less. Well, then you're not the right fit for us because our deals are going to take an average of Usually 12, uh, preferably 24 to 36 months, especially on the performing notes. If they're passive, it's great. If they got money sitting in an IRA and they're not touching, a passive investor is perfect for us. If they're very active, it may not be the right fit for them. I always ask them what kind of returns they're looking for or what kind of returns has their money made them, their investment made them. If it made them like 4%, well, if I could show you double that for a short period of time of 24 to 36 months, would they be interested? And oftentimes they'll say yes. Most people think when they hear notes, they think 30 years. Right? I'm gonna be tight with 30 years. No, 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 no. Our deals are usually 24 to 36 months. We're gonna buy it non-performing, get it re-performing and hold for cash flow for a period of time. Or we're gonna buy it and hold it for cash flow for a period of time. Or if we can't get it re-performing in 90 days, we're gonna start the foreclosure process and then foreclose and then take the asset back or sell it off at the auction. Okay. And yes, if that deal wraps up before 24 months, yes, we'll, we'll return your investment plus the principal, I mean, your principal plus the return as well. Um, we have a one-page investment questionnaire that we love to have our, not love, we require our investors to fill out before um, we start doing anything with them. And we'll ask them the questions, go from there, and then if they want to proceed, great. Fill out the investor questionnaire in full, send it back to us with a proof of funds and an email as a pledge letter saying, hey, Scott, I'm attaching a statement, it's got half a million, but I'm, I'm pledging 50K of that towards a, a note deal the next 12 months with you. Pretty simple to do. There are investors you want to avoid, people that are unfamiliar with real estate. Doesn't mean that your friends and families can't are, are a great place to do it. But somebody doesn't know what the hell you're talking about, what you're doing, it's just not worth wasting your time. It's better just to market to IRA investors. People that want their money only tied for 90 days or a higher ROI, like 50, you know, 12% or 15% or greater, then let them go do it themselves, that's what I say. I like to stick at 50,000 or, or more. When you're first starting off, you probably get some people that bring 25 to the table. Don't go below 25. They're going to be a pain in the ass, okay? Also, it's just as much as you interviewing these people as they are interviewing you. If somebody's a pain in the ass and you see that they talk bad or negative online, if something goes wrong or a deal gets longer, guess who they're going to be talking about bad online? Talking about you. If somebody's negative and Nancy, just avoid them. Trust your gut. People are so happy. You could do everything and you want and give them 11.5% return. But if you talk about 12%, they're going to be mad because you promised them 12. And it's okay to ask for references. Oh, have you done some deals? Do you have a, a partner that I could talk to? Because like I said, you're interviewing just as much as they are. So hey, who's your attorney? Who's your banker? Yes, you can take a look at my, yes, your attorneys will be able to look at my funding agreements for sure. They can look at the due diligence. Of course, glad to do it for you as well. But always, always, always require investors to do a couple of things. One, fill out the investor profile or questionnaire. Send you a pledge letter or email like we talked about. Require a proof of funds, making sure it's coming from an account, an IRA or 401k. Part of the reason you require proof of funds is to see where the money's coming from. Because if it's with like a Schwab account in stocks and mutual funds, they're going to have to trade out of those funds and then move those funds into a self-directed IRA or move it into a cash account that they can then wire to you, wire to your escrow account, or wire to the bank or lender you're funding from. If they don't return these items, they're not going to fund, ladies and gentlemen. I can't tell you how many students I've had. They're like, oh, I've worked with that person before. Yeah, they're going to fund. And then they don't fund. And I'm like, well, did you requ request these three things? No. Well, that's the reason. These are all getting yeses along the way. It's a sales tactic. Yes, I want to do this. I'm going to meet with you. Yes, I'll send you the questionnaire. Yes, I'll do a pledge letter email. Yes, I'll send you a proof of funds, okay? 
And that's why you got to know, because then the next yes is getting to open a self-directed IR account with Quest or Equity Trust or somebody else. Okay. And that takes about a week. So if it takes them three days to move the money from stocks, bonds, mutual funds into cash, then a day or two to wire. At the same time, you get them opening the account, take about a week to get everything going. So you got to understand if you got a month of fun, you got to start marketing now. And this is what we tell people. Look, when you start marketing for deals, you got to start marketing for funding. Don't wait till you get a deal and you need funding. That's the biggest kiss of death because then you'll be like, oh, I got to close in a week and I don't have any funding lined up. Okay. Like I said, it takes a couple of days and it takes a while to get things rock and roll, but you got to start marketing. Now. And this is important. You're going to, I will not give you a copy of our funding agreement. I don't, I only give that to our one-on-one -on -one coaching students. You still, it's easy to have your attorney create paperwork. A funding agreement is not hard at all to do. Okay. You can start bidding on notes right now, Mark. Like I'll give you a great question. This is a great question. If you don't have money right now, that's fine, but start bidding. They're not asking for proof of funds. Like I'll give you an example. I bid on uh, 65 assets. My bid was $2.5 million. Did I have 2.5 million lined up? No. Out of that, I got 31 that were accepted or countered. Did I still have a million and a half on that? No. I reduced that from 31 down to nine, which is about 250,000, next about $300,000. But I've been marketing for money along the way. So you start bidding now, bid on 10 assets to get one accepted, bid on 20 assets to get two, three accepted, okay? There's a lot of reasons to fade your bid or reduce your bids or cancel your bids during the due diligence process. If you wait till the perfect asset before you start marketing, you're behind the eight ball. Rarely are they gonna ask for a proof of funds. If you're bidding on a one-off asset, yeah, then it's probably good to have proof of funds. But a lot of times your investors aren't going to fund with you until they see something. That's why we talk about case studies. Yeah, it's you're not signing a contract that penalizes you. You're not going to lose earnest money. You don't put earnest money down with a notes deal. And if you're buying a bigger portfolio, yeah, you might have to put some money down. But it's, stay soft until there's a, a period where that deposit goes hard. You can back at any time and get your deposit back before it goes hard. Okay. You can cancel your bid because taxes come back more than you thought. Condition comes back. It's vacant and trashed out. You know, a lot of things you can cancel bids for. It's not that difficult, okay? Um, allow a CPA or attorneys. I always allow a CPA or attorneys. Although attorneys will sometimes screw stuff up just because they want to re re uh, screw stuff up. Always use agreements. It outlines when things go. Even if you're using your friends and family, still put a funding agreement together. Talk about a, a funding agreement, what's going on with the people. And you got to realize most investors can't make 6% or greater when it comes to themselves. So don't give them greater than 6%. If money is making 0% sitting in an IRA account and you give them 6%, that's great. That's an above average return on what they're getting. Or give them 5% or 7%. Just don't go off giving everybody 12%. That's one of the mistakes I made earlier. And I'll give you 12%. It's a different market now. It's a little tighter than it was back eight years ago. So I got to be, your money's got to be cheaper to you. You got to know what your money costs are going to cost when you, Start talking to people and start making an offers. Okay. That's why if you go and watch those breaking down videos, I literally will put columns. Hey, if I buy this at this, this is what my money costs is going to cost me. And here's my profit. Here's the difference between what is coming in on a monthly payment versus what I got to pay out my investor. Is is that makes sense for me? Okay. Um, as far as payments, we uh if making payments, we don't do monthly, we do quarterly. We don't do a monthly payment. If it's going to an IRA, they can't touch that money anyway. So once a quarter, it's one ACH fee versus three ACH fees, one wire fee versus three wire fees. Okay. Um, you can set up an online portal for tracking. You know, it, a lot of these servicing companies will allow you to have an investor login for your IRA investors, or we use like Basecamp or Dropbox or something like that. They can log in and see everything that's going on. All sorts of great different things that are Google Sheets you can share, Dropbox, all that good stuff, okay? Never, ever, 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 ever pull investors' money together unless you've got a fund and, and got approved of the SEC. Always use one investor per asset. Now, you could buy eight assets at a time and have eight different investors, because, but one investor is only funding one deal. They're only getting profit on one deal, so it's, it would be eight individual funding agreements off of one sales contract, okay?
and trust your instincts. If the guy or gal is a pain in the ass, they talk bad, and you just go get a good feel for them, move on. Because you're going to be in bed with this person for 12, 24, 36 months. And they they can be a pain in the ass, and you don't want to deal with them more longer. Okay? Questions about that? All right, let me. I want to share something before we take a, a, a quick little break here. Let's go over here. I'm going to actually walk you through kind of how easy it is to jump online to fire IRA investors. Now, like I said, some states make it easier than others. Some counties are going to require you to register with the county to be able to pull that information. If you're in a county or deal that gives you difficult, doesn't research by name, guess what? Just go to a different state, different county. IRA investors will invest all across the country. Okay. So if we go over here, let's just go to Netra Online. netronline.com. There you go. Now you go down here, and it's going to pull up. You're going to click on Public Records Online. Access Public Records Online. It's going to take you over here to a map. The map's going to pop up the country. And let's pick a state. Let's go on Texas here. And you got a list of all these counties. So you just do the drop down. Let's just do uh, let's just do Dallas County. Dallas County. I give them a second here, and it'll pull up all the different counties. So you have tax office clerk, local taxing list, Dallas appraisal district. Yeah, they can be lenders instead of investors. Pros and cons doesn't matter. I mean, you have to, they can just be lenders to you. They don't have to be investors. It's, it's totally up to you. Investors often want a high return. Lenders will usually be a more passive return. Okay. All right. So we're here. Let's do the, um, we'll just do the uh, Dallas tax office. We'll click there. And there you go. Owner search, address search, account search, fiduciary search. So we're just going to type in. Owner search, and we're just going to type in, let's just type in equity trust and hit search. And in zero seconds, it took us to 162 matches of people who have you that own an IRA or own a property in their IRA account. Look at that. Equity trust company, there's the number and equity trust company. There's their mailing address, P.O. Box 3574 Cedar Hill, Texas, and the property address. Look at that. Look at that. You could literally do a mail merge just off of this. Copy, paste this all, and, you know, you clean up, put an Excel spreadsheet, do a mail merge, say, hey, equity trust company, I see that you bought, or equity trust investor, I saw that you bought a property uh, in Dallas County at Bedral Place for your IRA. Are you looking to fund some more deals? I'd love to talk with you. There you go. You see these people live in Dallas. You see these people live in North Oaks, Minnesota. Uh, the one you want to look for, if it gives you a mail address, like this one right here, Equity Trust, with One Equity Way, Westlake, Ohio, or El Euro, Ohio. That's going to be the mail address for Equity Trust. You wouldn't send a letter to them. You could send it to the actual property address at that point and hope the tenant put it there. But if you just click on here, maybe we can find the actual name. Sometimes if you look at the deed search, maybe but that's okay so there's that's one one person out of the 162 so far okay but there you go we just found 162 just like that boom that's one county i pulled the top 25 counties in texas and it was over 2,000 IRA investors by searching just for equity trust and quest trust. And what I do, I have them all on a list. And then we're actually putting that list with a company that skip traces that I'll talk about later on. And they're going to send me back names, I mean, uh, email addresses and phone numbers for probably 75%. And then I'm just going to drop a postcard out to them or I'm going to drop an email blast out to them, just basically talk about what I see. So that's 162. Let's go back here though to the recorder's office to do the other search. The Dallas, they look for deed records. Okay, so te Texas file clerk, uh, Dallas clerk here by subscription only, okay. That's fine, if you guys subscribe to it, great. Property records, there we go. All right, so we're gonna type in, let's just do uh, Quest Trust. And we're gonna change it. We don't wanna do it from 1800. 
Um, let's do this. Let's do January 21st to this year. We'll just do Quest Trust Company and it's search. What do we find? What do we find? We found how many? One hundred forty-one people that uh, quest labor lien. Okay, maybe not. So you can see. Oh, it looks like Dallas County put a lien against this property. The investor has it with their IRA. So now you, this the clerk search takes a little bit more work. Okay, so we click on this one, and now we got to blow this up a little bit. Here's a copy. So you see this one is the address of the property. And the owner's name is Quest Trust Company for the benefit of, of Joshua something, okay? But the mailing address is the, the Houston office. So we'll just move on to the next one. The next doc. Here's the property address. 22 East Ann Arbor Drive, Dallas, Texas, and it's Quest Trust Company. They don't have a name. It's fine. Notice I would just mail this to over here, the property address. Want the tenant or the landlord give this? Let's go to another one. Here we go. Same statement of expenses. We'll just keep going to the next one. I'm trying to find a better deed here for you. There we go. There you go, Quest Trust Company, 722 Reeves Lane, Steganville, Texas. That's a property address. You can go back and find the mailing address and send it to them that way. So you would, I'd pay a B, VA to go through these individually like this. It's not worth your time to do it. Uh, let's see here, General Venters Lane. This is Quest Home Services. That's not Quest IRA or mine. There you go, power attorney, we'll move on. Here we go. Now what's great is in a lot of these, when it's a deed, you can see exactly how much they lent out of their IRA. So this is a release of lien. Um, so this was, let's see here. Here we go, Quest Trust Company for the benefit of Thomas Fulton IRA. They lent $200,000 to Sherwin LLC. And this was dated August 22nd, 2022. So this Thomas Fulton IRA, there you go. Does it give us an address on this? It doesn't give us an address, but that's okay. Um, it gives us the, the physical address, but you could do Thomas Fulton. Let's look at the next page to see if there's an address, an address for mail and address. No, nope, that's just the attorney. Well, you can reach out. Oh, Alan Chesker. I know Alan. Alan's a friend of mine. Hey, do you know this guy? There you go, Thomas Fulton. <laughs> um, trying to reach him out. He's got an IRA. Can you forward my mail to him? So it's, sometimes there's a mail address. But you get what I'm saying. You see what we did? Just did there. 162 and 141. That's 300 potential, roughly around 300 potential IRA investors, just like that. Here's another release. Uh, that's probably the release of lien we just looked at. Yeah, I see Quest Trust Company for the, the benefit of Lisa Pachelik IRA. And you see Park Road North. Well, Lisa Pachelik has a pretty unique name. I would just Google that, see if she's on LinkedIn or Facebook, and then I would just send her a message. And oftentimes I'll give the address of the property here. I'm trying to see if it's in here. Um, yeah, well, that's the mail address. That's not the same thing. But you, you get how easy that was just like that in a few <clears throat> in a few minutes. I bet you're all know. Let me look at my own county real fast. <laughs> I mean, heck, some of the counties in, in different parts of the country will literally have a download button with a mailing address. You can just download the spreadsheet directly. 
It's stupid easy. All right. Raising capital is actually easier than most people make it out to be. <clears throat> yeah, Laurel is like, yes, I'm looking in Ohio. So if you go to Lucas County, Lucas County will actually let you download an Excel spreadsheet with everything all in one spot. Stupid. Just doing equity trust. Best trust. So questions, comments, concerns about that, ladies and gentlemen? All righty. Moving on.